Good morning and welcome to the Namaste Center. It's a beautiful day in many ways here today. First of all, to see all the smiling, beautiful souls here today and also to have the experience of being on our first album together, or CD. <laughs> it's, it's a great shared experience and uh, look forward to seeing our name and lights here, Terry. We'll travel with you on tour and uh, we'll be the backup singers, the Terry, Wet, the Terry Wetton Namaste backup singers. So that sounds good, it's exciting. And uh, just feeling all the, the love and appreciation for each and every one of you guys here today and um, excited to be here. So today, you know, I, what I was talking about is years and years ago, not that many, maybe 15, 10, I don't know, in Florida, uh, we had the pleasure at the Palm Beach Center for Living to have um, many wonderful speakers come in. And, you know, there was some who came in and maybe their egos were a little, you know, puffy, and, uh, and that's okay, that's not for me to judge, but maybe that was the case. And, uh, but we also had the pleasure of every year uh, having uh, Marian Williamson come in and give us a lecture, present a lecture, and she was uh, amazing, and, and she it was actually uh, such, a, she is a great speaker, and I don't know if you re uh, know this, she ran for Congress in California, unfortunately didn't win, but um, Certainly put a good, uh, good face out there and, and lots of love and a good message. But um, I remember the way she used to do her talks, and I don't know what she does now, but she would give an hour talk on any given subject. As a matter of fact, she really didn't know what she was going to talk about when she got there. We would be driving to the venue. What are you going to talk about tonight? She goes, I don't know yet. I'm like, okay, you got a thousand people coming, so <laughs> I might want to think of something. But, uh, you know, but if they, you know, they'd be happy just to see you, Marianne. But, uh, but as always, you know, it was always an inspiration to me because she, was, she just opened herself totally to spirit. Whatever spirit had to say through her, she was open. And that was a beautiful lesson for me to witness because, you know, she didn't get caught up in um, planning. As the Course in Miracles says, a healed mind doesn't plan. She just showed up and had the faith and trust that uh, the message would come through her, and it always did. Well, at the end of, she'd take a break after her hour-long talk, and the second half of the program was usually a questions and answers. And people would ask her everything. <clears throat> and uh, one woman, I remember this very well, had, had, you know, of course had to praise and adore Marianne and you're so wonderful and all of these things. And, and Marianne just put her hands up and said, whoa, whoa, whoa. You know, she just really deflected it and said, I am no different from you. I am no more special than you. I'm not better than you. This is just what I'm here to do. And I consider myself just another pilgrim on the path. And I thought that that was so powerful because, you know, so often, uh, you know, when I, I, I read and watch, you know, other videos of other teachers and some, some tend to see themselves maybe separate. And so I'm the spiritual leader and here's the flock and it's my group and my church, my center, and, I, and I'm the leader and blah, blah, blah. And that's okay. I, I really, this is not meant to judge truly. But it's just an observation because um, that doesn't feel right to me at all, uh, for me. And, you know, when I speak of the Namaste Center, it's always our center. You know, it's not my Namaste Center, it's our Namaste Center, and it truly is. It, it's our center. And the purpose that I see myself as, as sort of an organizer, a teacher, but I feel my main purpose is to... Uh, allow a space for everybody to step into their role as, as spiritual beings to the highest and best of, of their ability and to allow themselves to be still and listen, tune into that voice within themselves rather than what I'm saying. So all, all my teachings, I, I hope, lead us all within. That's really where it's, where it's at. I have no idea what, you know, what anyone's best interest is, much less my own. And if I, <laughs> and Ellen will attest to that. And, uh, but it's, it's really, uh, it's, it's a path that we all have to um, find on our own. You know, it's our own journey through life and through this experience. And the beauty of, um, one thing I love so much is teaching the ministerial classes. 
And that, that is an opportunity, you know, the, the, the teachings, the books that we use are not anything leading edge, nothing that anyone in this room wouldn't know about already. I can't imagine that. But the, the desire as a facilitator of that group is for people to be able to lead themselves within and, and recognize their own divinity and wake up to that. So they can really, it's a clearing. These classes are an opportunity for clearing and awakening so that they can, the students can go forth in, in their ministry more healed and more whole and live from the highest degree of love. And so it's a different uh, way of maybe presenting um, church or a spiritual center because it's, um, it's real important, I think, for, for all of us. And I'm, the awesome thing about it is I see every week, I mean, I'm looking around the room here and I just see so many leaders. Uh, every one of you has such a gift and a, a spark that is just, every week it gets brighter and brighter. Don't you all feel it? it it's this, the energy in here every, every week, I, I have to say, gets stronger and stronger. And it's because people, each and every one of us, are stepping up to the plate. We're really taking responsibility for our, our lives, our actions, our thoughts, our feelings, and how we, all that matters is the love we share and, and really being willing to live from that space. So it's, it's really a, a gratifying experience. And that's why it's important, you know, to have other perspectives and teachers who can come in and, and uh, offer another way to look and be in the world, look at and be in the world. Next week, we've got uh, Susan coming in and she's always a fantastic presenter, Susan Warner. And always love to hear what she has to say. Our styles are different, but her message is, is so powerful. And, and uh, you know, it's, it's great just to see like, wow, you know, Susan, when I met you three years ago, two years ago, and the difference now is amazing. And, and, I, and I'd like to consider, you know, that I've grown some too over the past few years. And a lot of it's been kicking and screaming and through pain and, and, and anger and blame. But, uh, you know, I'm recognizing my role in, in things that have happened over the years. And like, okay, if I'm responsible for the world I see, then I've got to take responsibility for that, 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 that. And it's not anyone's fault anymore. And, and that's, I think that's a level, a mark of spiritual maturity, is that when we accept 100% responsibility for the world that we see and that we're in. And uh, I really feel that is, is the, the goal of the group here. And I see it, all, as I say, all the time. So I, I'm not um, fluffing it up here, it's just a truth. <clears throat> um, the one thing is, too, that, you know, with these ministerial classes and even being here on Sundays, I learn it so much. I, I think I learn more from you guys than you guys could ever learn from me. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. I mean, I'm like, wow, you know, these ministerial classes are a great way for me to learn more because people bring so much to it. And then the classes and the seminars. So in that respect, I think it's a great way, you know, certainly here on Sunday is a great way to be together, to experience joy and have fun and connect and, and meditate together and hear a message, but also to take part in other activities either here at the Namaste Center or somewhere else, I think it's important. Because when you get on this path, it's just, it just keeps, keeps getting us more excited to elevate and, and raise our consciousness. And I always think, you know, when Marian Williamson said the idea, I'm just another pilgrim on the path, well, I think of like Buddha and Jesus, okay? You know, they, they were holy men. I think we can all agree to that. And I, I can't imagine Jesus <clears throat> ever having a Messiah complex. I don't think that he came, you know, to uh, I am here and uh, worship me. I just don't envision him being like that or Buddha. And Buddha um, and Jesus, you know, I feel they were pilgrims on the path as well. And they demonstrated, <clears throat> you know, through their lives, uh, love, living from love. That's what they did. Forgiveness, acceptance. And I, I see, I recognize, and I choose to do this just as an observer, not as a, a place of judgment, but I recognize that a lot of religions and spiritual teachings and have created holy wars. That's an oxymoron, isn't it? A holy war? I mean, that's, it's, it's, um, it's insane. And the Course in Miracles basically says that the thinking of this world is upside down and backwards. 
and, and the ego is constantly wanting to perpetuate war, create separation, keep us in hierarchies and levels and all kinds of nut crazy stuff. Because the ego's purpose is really to keep us distracted from the experience of God. So when we recognize this, of course, there's some holy wars going on across the world right now, as we all know, but it's not for us to jump in and, and again condemn and blame and judge and attack and defend, but rather recognize, send, uh, you know, compassion and love and, and know that there is a, a bigger plan unfolding. Well, one thing that the Course in Miracles also states is it says, God is incomplete without me. And I mentioned that in the meditation because what it's, what it's really stressing to us is that we all are created in the likeness and image of God, which is light, love, unconditional forgiveness. That's who we are in truth. And that we're here to, the way uh, I had it described many years ago, it's, it's as if, you know, we, uh, although we, in truth, are non-dualistic beings, we're just uh, pure love, we fell asleep, we have forgotten our true nature, and we have free will in every moment to choose love to be my guide or fear, ego or the Holy Spirit. So every time I choose the Holy Spirit or love to be my guide, I'm lifting the vibration, not only for me, but for um, each and every person on the planet, because we're not separate from each other. So really, it all comes down to self-healing. All healing is self-healing. And I remember uh, I heard an explanation one time about we, that you have sort of soul groups or pods that you land in. And it's amazing, you know, the synchronicity and the flow. And you, you get with this group, and then you begin to connect the dots. And it's like we all of a sudden, you may have a connection with someone in California or Japan, or Florida, it, you know, it's pretty amazing. So we do tend to, to gather in soul groups because we're, we're, if you go from a vibrational perspective, we're attracting those who are like us. And so it's, it's very cool. So no matter where you go, it's like they say, wherever you go, there you are. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, if you think that moving somewhere is gonna take your problems away, it's not because you're gonna take yourself with you. So mm -hmm. something to remember. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but it's, it's up to us to recognize, but it's great to see all of us that have come here to this area to convene together, to grow spiritually and create a soul family. And, of course, in that soul family can also be those people that really come to push our buttons and charge us up. And, and when you get to the point, too, of taking responsibility for everything in our life, those are no mistakes. Every person that comes into our life, especially those that get us charged up the most, are our greatest teachers. Can we all agree to that? Don't like it, but it's, it's the truth. And, and it's, but then, you know, when you get to the other side of it, it really does, you can see once you've forgiven and done your healing work, that that was a great opportunity for growth and, and healing for you. And I found that to be the case. And I love a, a statement that Marian Williamson made years ago, and that she probably still uses it because it's so great. And it's, uh, and I've shared it before, but it's uh, about forgiveness. And she talks about forgiveness and says, just because I forgive you, you know, she says that forgiveness is, is our goal. It's our job here. That's what we're here to do is to forgive. But she said, just because I forgive you doesn't mean we have to have lunch, okay? So, <laughs> and, and then I, I've shared this before, but if, a few years later, she said, you know, Spirit came to her and said, that you left out a word on that, Marianne. And that was just because I forgive you doesn't mean we have to have lunch yet. Well, there's a lot, of, I have to say, I've done a lot of forgiveness work and I can have lunch with most people today. Uh, there's a couple that I don't want to have lunch with. Yet. And uh, I was just talking to someone, yeah. Melissa, last night about that. There's one person especially that I just can't have lunch with yet. And, uh, and I recognize that and it's been a long time, a lot of forgiveness work. And I know that there's more unfolding there and we may have, the, but at least I recognize it and I'm willing. And I know that, that that's when I'm able to, ha uh, you know, make that call for lunch that, uh, you know, a whole new uh, level of awareness and awakening will, will unfold as well. So it's, I, I've recognized that, you know, this whole idea, you know, back to the pilgrim on the path thing, 
is <clears throat> in so many uh, religions that there is a hierarchy of, of chain of command. And so there is, you know, uh, let's say in certain churches that you have to go through the priest to actually get to God. Yeah. Well, that doesn't make sense to me either, but we, because God, there's a direct connection between us and God at all times. We don't have to go through anyone, anything. We just have to be still and tune in. And also, you know, how we've been, uh, when we allow ourselves to fall into that hierarchy, we also allow ourselves to be controlled and manipulated, and we don't think from our higher self, we're thinking about someone else's uh, ideas and ideals and opinions. Some, are, some may be wonderful, but it's still not maybe our highest and best. You know, that's how people end up uh, drinking Kool-Aid, by the way. You know, yeah. <clears throat> um, if I ever invite you over for Kool-Aid, run. And because uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, um, it's, it's, but what happened there, really with Jim Jones, for example, what did he do? He made his flock uh, dependent on him and, and was so engaging and convincing that his path was the way that they literally uh, followed him right to the Kool-Aid. And it's, um, it's interesting. Again, not judging, but just a lesson, because everything is a lesson God would have us learn. Well, you know, it's not only in spirituality we get caught up in this uh, you know, hierarchy, you know, golf. You know, that was my former uh, gig. And um, it was uh, interesting because there was such a, uh, you know, you had to go through all these levels of, and then if you were, if you really studied and went through all these levels of teaching and learning, you could become a master golf professional. And then those were so revered, oh, you know, he's, or she's a master professional. Oh, really? Wow. You want to work for, oh, you want to be a master professional. And I skated under the radar in my golf career big time. I, I just didn't buy that. I, and so I just taught golf. I loved it. People came to me, and they didn't come to me, and it didn't matter because uh, that's just the way I did it. But we get caught up in it, you know, in spirituality and golf and business and life in general, always putting someone on that pedestal. And, of course, what happens when we put someone on the pedestal? You want to kick them off. Yeah. And it's, it's uh, <clears throat> what do they say, that if, uh, if, you're, if you're causing a lot of uh, upsetting people, then you must be doing something right. Well, I, you know, uh, there's a there is some truth to that, I think. I think that when we live in our power and oneness, it can be threatening and create a resistance. But I'd like to think that if we really could take that stance of love, that it would just dispel all that darkness and fear, because that resistance is, is fear, false evidence appearing real. Uh, I found this quote, uh, Terry loves my quotes. When leaders claim that God bypasses their followers and speaks directly to them, they greatly diminish all that God does through the lives of believers. Leaders who begrudge people the opportunity to seek God themselves and who do not actively teach their people how to hear God's voice have disqualified themselves as spiritual leaders. So again, it's, it's not about dogma, doctrine. I think we're moving <coughs> past that. It's not about... A code of behavior. Uh, you know, we, we sit here and say, well, in some cultures or some religions, what's, what's not accepted spiritually may be a foundation of another spiritual path. And that was always confusing to me. Was that ever confusing to you guys or just me? That uh, this path says this is okay, so you're, what are you going to do? You're going to find the path that says, oh, it's okay to dance or it's okay to, you know, do whatever. But really, it's, it's up to us to, to go within. And that's, you know, what the Namaste uh, Center is all about. So leading us to find the answers within. And, of course, the Course in Miracles says to teach. We teach by demonstrating. Words are just... Words are meaningless, really. Who you are speaks louder than any words you can say, period. End of, end of story there. You know, we talked a little bit about our course in our Course in Miracles the other night about special relationships. And, you know, how, how you know, it's always been uh, taught to us that, oh, oh, they're special. Oh, I'm special. And then you feel like, oh, yeah, I'm special because I accomplished this or did that. And... <clears throat> Once we deem ourselves or someone as special, again, we're creating separation. So it's about knowing, again, back to Marianne Williamson, she, 
uh, told a story of when she was telling her daughter, Emma, when she was little, that uh, just to remember that she's no more special than anyone else and to remember that everybody is special. So everybody is special because they are created in the same likeness and image of, of love and God. So it's up to us to recognize that and see in each other. So what we're doing here as we awaken is we're, we're removing all these hierarchies and all these levels and we're just getting down to true oneness. And um, it's, uh, oh, so I, the one thing too, you know, I love about The Course in Miracles is special relationships and I'm going to do a talk in the future on that because it, it lends itself to being a topic for a whole talk. But uh, another thing that the Course does talk about is idolatry and all of these idols that we put before God. And those idols can be, of course, our image, uh, uh, our education, our level of mastery, how much money we have, our accomplishments, whatever it is. And then we make those things special and idols. And once we do that, again, we've, we've really disconnected. Uh, we've forgotten who we are in truth. So it's about us just remembering that we are complete. There's nothing we can do to change God's mind about us. Nothing. You can go out and, and find, uh, create peace in the world, uh, find a way to stop the conflict, and that's a wonderful thing, but that's not going to change God's mind about you a bit. And you can be the most rotten, miserable person on the planet, and that's not going to change God's mind about you. And that sort of takes the stress and the pressure off because it's just that we're loved no matter what, and that's the truth. And it's um, in the Course of Miracles, in the um, uh, manual for teachers, uh, there's a section that says, how should, how should the teachers of God spend their day? And uh, it basically, uh, and I speak about this often, and it, it basically says, um, That, that the teacher of God will be told all that, well, I can hardly read this. The teacher, <laughs> the, sorry about that. The teacher of God will be told all that his role should be this day and every day. And those who share that role with him will find him so they can learn the lessons for the day together. And so if we just, the spirit will lead us to all the lessons we need. You know, we, if we just open up. And the cool thing is, is that the people that need to uh, learn from us, because you know, we're all teachers and students, they're going to find us as well. So it, uh, just let go, let God. You know, that's a, a quote that we hear all the time. And to be open to, to that guidance, to be willing to let go and let God. And know that each and every person is is. There's no accident to who's here in this moment. And there's no accident who's not here at this moment. And when you see the synchronicity and the perfection of everything unfolding, it's really amazing. And in closing, um, I was sharing a little bit about this with Pam and Brian a, a few weeks ago or a couple weeks ago. And because uh, I've been contemplating this because, you know, sometimes it's uh, I stand up here and it's I like to speak. I like to this is fun. It's fun for me. I uh, by no means um, see myself as any more advanced or evolved than anybody. But, you know, what is the role? I don't like the title of spiritual leader. And Brian said, you're a tuning fork. <laughs> I said, I like that. <laughs> so I, I think that idea that, uh, that, that my goal is to resonate at a place that, that allows others, because, you know, when we're in coherence, when you hit that tuning fork, everything gels to it and that's what we all are and so when we think about that if everything if we're in a vibrational universe which we are if we just think of ourselves as these tuning forks and re and just know that we uh, everything that comes into our field is going to be resonant with that um with that vibration it's very cool thanks brian i like the way that i like that that was great so just uh, i'd like to just again um suggest that maybe we all Take that into consideration. God is incomplete without each and every one of us. Not only us here, but everyone in the world. And that we are here to forgive. We're here to have lunch, eventually. Uh, we're here to, um, and most important, we're here to be that tuning fork and, the, and live in that vibration of love. 
That's the greatest gift we can bring to the world, and you all are doing a darn good job, and so it is. Namaste.